Shalom Israel. Shalom brothers and sisters. Um, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Baha Hashem Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem Rakakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. I want to give salutations to all the Akim out there that's pushing the truth and, and 100% uh, truth and all truth and sincerity. And of course, all the other uh, one thirds out there, the believers of, of Yahweh, Baha Hashem Yahweh Shai. Um, Listen, I, this, this video's been on my mind for a while. The Spirit's been heavy on me to do it. And uh, it was sent to me by my father-in-law. Um, now, at first glance, you'd be like, Yay, you know, children of Israel are waking up. But then, uh, as we grow older, and the truth, we, we, we understand it and, and see things in more spiritual level, okay? Uh, so, therefore, uh, I told my father-in-law, Hey, that's, that's not the right way, man. And I said, uh, listen, I'm going to make a rebuke video uh, for IUIC about this, and I'm going to send him a copy. So um, this is it. This is the rebuke video. And it's, it's uh, mainly sending out a word to all brothers in all different camps. Uh, because this is, this is the time, if you're not aware, all the prophecies are, are coming to pass quickly. Uh, so we're 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 uh, we're bringing the alarm uh, into Jerusalem, uh, letting everybody know, hey man, this is the time. It's it's at, it's at the door, okay, brothers and sisters. So all you uh, we're looking for the hopeful elect, one forty four thousand, and the one third, okay, the the true believers in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Uh, it's time for you to uh, don't don't be lukewarm. Either be hot or cold, that's what the Father says. So that's what this video is mainly for, okay? So it's just what it is. So let's, let's, let's just jump right into the scriptures, okay? We're going to, um, first scripture we got right, right here um, is Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men. After the rudiments of the world and not after Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, so right there it's telling you beware. Don't let no man get you all messed up, man. Through what? Through philosophy. Through all these other different doctrines. How they twist the doctrines around, uh, you know, to say one thing and it, and it doesn't really mean that. Things like that. That's why you have to be very careful in this truth. And deceit. Just vain lies. Vanity. You know, for what? Their own glory. So be careful about things like that. After the what? The traditions of men. Because, uh, so, what's going on here? Uh, did the Lord, where, where does the scripture say the Lord say march down the road? And now you, you're doing it annually. 
So that sounds like some kind of tradition to me. Doesn't that sound like a tradition? That's what it sounds like. It, it looks like a tradition. Um, that's a tradition of men. So be careful with that. That's what the Lord said. Be careful. You know. All right. So we're going to jump on over to uh, 2 Timothy. Uh, we're going to read verse 4. Uh, chapter 2. I'm sorry. Chapter 4, verse 2. This simply, this is what the, what the Creator said. You know what I'm saying? He said, go not the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to where? The lost sheep of the house of Israel, man. We're looking for the elect. The 140, the hopefully elect, the 144, waking up the children of Israel. Not all Israel is not Israel, man. Okay? So this is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. It says, preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove. Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay, one doctrine, man. So, once again, I'm telling y'all um, to all you brothers out there in, those, in these different camps, this is not no bragging thing, this is not no boasting thing. This is the truth, okay? There's only one doctrine, there's only one Savior, okay? This is not some uh, gang members and things like that. Uh, or some kind of cult over here. We're following the we're following the Lamb, man. You hear me? So, listen. Uh, when I was I was when I was first in the in, when I first came to the truth. Sure, in the beginning you're you're all over the place trying to find your your, your footing. You know, it's inter it's beautiful, it's entertaining, it's exciting to see all these different camps, all these brothers doing their thing. You know, but then when you get serious about it, when you become hot and not no lukewarm or not no cold. The spirit should take over you and, and you should hear the true doctrine of peace, man. And that's what happened to me, man. And that's why the Lord took me over to Great Millstone, huh? You can, you can, right away, I just knew something was going on. Something more spiritual, something more powerful. All right, so that's why we're up here letting y'all know right now. Up in these camps. And, and you camp leaders, too. There's nothing wrong with becoming a, a student all over again. Repent and come back, man. And stop leading them children astray. Cause these, this is some serious times, and things are gonna happen to y'all if you don't, if you don't open your eyes and stop looking for fame, glory. L let me stop rambling on. Let's read this again. It says, "Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering." Okay. It says, "For the time will come when they not, when they will not endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. That's the one doctrine. But after their own lust." Shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears? They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables, man. So what kind of fable is this? What, what are y'all doing? What, what are you marching up and down the street for? The Lord said preach the word, man. He didn't say go put on a show for the people, for the, for the two-thirds that, that, that don't, don't care and that won't get it. Huh? And that's the understanding that we've come to believe, you know, right now. Sure. That's why, the, that's why in the apocrypha the Lord said, don't worry about those that's going to perish. Worry about yourself. Worry about the ones that's going to be saved. You understand? Okay. Um, look, we're going to, just, just quickly, we're going to run over to um, just, just a brief thing here. This came up the other day as well. This is uh, Proverbs chapter one verse twenty. Okay, it says, "Let's let's jump let's jump over to twenty two. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? The scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge, man. Because the Lord is talking about uh, what well, we we've come to know that this is more a high spiritual level, man. You know what I'm saying? This is a uh, it is, it is just for the elect. That's what the brother brought out the other day. And I, I see that even more clear right now. That's why it says, uh, who, who, uh, you know, who loses their life? Who forsakes uh, wife, husband, children for the word of the truth, man? Because we come to, we come to know that this, this place is passing away. Because we're looking for a new heaven and a new earth. This, he said this place is going to be like, like grass, withered grass, man. So therefore, you, you, you're uh, searching for something more, more, more. You understand? Okay? Instead of trying to, are you holding on? What are you trying to hold on to Babylon for? 
Okay. It says, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make my words known to you. These are the words of the Lord to you. Okay? This is your time right here, brothers and sisters. If you really love the Lord, Father, and you really come to serve the Lord, hey, come to the 100% truth. Stop messing around. Because if you're up in these other church, up in these other groups over here, it's just like being in a denomination over here with either Baptist, Lutheran, Catholic, same damn thing. We got a little bit over here. We got a little bit of something over here for you. Oh no, look, we got the good stuff over here. Them other people, them other people over there, they, they, nah. You gotta check yourself before you wreck yourself, man. Look. Let's hit uh, Jeremiah real quick because this uh, it's the, the word is not that it's it should be it should be you know it, the the Lord put certain things in place so you you should know okay we got it like nine more minutes. okay uh, the Lord put certain things in the place so you would you would see the truth and understand the truth and you'd be able to discern. Um, truth from from falsehoods okay so look this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 10 we're gonna just skip to verse 2 thus said the Lord learn not the way of the heathen what are those what are some of the ways of the heathen that, 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 uh, these, that these groups are doing what y'all doing over here he said learn not the ways of the heathen now that that can that blankets a lot of things what did the heathen do what did the heathen do the heathen worship Jesus Christ, number one. You hear me? And we all know the letter J was not was not in, introduced into the alphabet until uh, 1680, 1700s. So that's not the Messiah's name, and it does matter. He will call you will call on my name. That's power in that name, huh? Okay. Look, I don't. I'm, I'm, I don't want this video to be super long, so we're just gonna be jumping. We're just gonna jump it, man, and hit the hit these things. Okay, we're gonna go to John, chapter fourteen, verse five. Okay. It says, "Thomas said unto him, Lord, we may not, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way?" And Yahweh shall say unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? It says, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's what the Lord said. He said, Yahweh shall say, He is the way, the truth, and the life. So he's the one that's going to bring you uh, everlasting life, man. He's the truth, man. There's no, there's not, not, no way around it. Okay. While we're in the book of John, let's let's uh, just move over to uh, John 10, verse 26. It says, "I t let's let's start at 25." Yahweh shall answer them. I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me, right? But ye believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. So are you of the Father's sheep? The Lord goes on to say, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. They follow me. They don't follow the traditions of man. They don't follow no man. You understand? Now when I say that, I'm not saying that you're, gonna, you're not going to have teachers that teach you these things. Because we do have elders and apostles of Great Millstone, definitely, uh, that teach this word. We got other brothers out there that's... You know, been in the truth longer than us. I, I don't know. I don't know nothing. I'm nobody. Huh? But we follow who? The Lamb. We follow the word of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay? In all truth. Okay? We got to move over to Matthew. Real quick. Matthew 6, 22. It says, the light of the body is the eye, right? Therefore, thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. 
So your eye is single, man. You don't got time to be marking, marching all up and down the street. Because your eye is single and is doing what the Lord tells you to do. What did the Lord say? Preach the word. Be in season, out of season. Huh? That's it. So what we do at Great Millstone, we go preach the word. Then when we're not preaching the word, we're in this, we're in our uh in our place studying and making these epistles, preaching the word constantly. Okay, we're gonna move over to uh first Peter. Every time I think of Peter. First Peter. First Peter one twelve. First Peter ch chapter one verse twelve. Okay, we're going to go, uh, this is going to be a little long one, okay? So I'm going to read it quickly. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us that did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look at, okay? So these words that we preach are coming straight. They're, they're inspired by the Holy Spirit, man. It says, wherefore, gird up thy loins of the mind. Huh? Stop messing around. Be sober and hope to the end for, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You better hope that you, that you have grace in that day when the Lord comes back. Okay? It says, as obedient children, doing what? Preaching the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Not marching all up and down the road, man. How much time do we have? It says, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorance. Don't be, uh, the old man, you should be getting farther and farther away from that old man. And anybody that's still chasing their old man, don't follow them brothers. Okay? But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner and conversations. So you be holy. What's, what's, what's holy about marching up and down the street, being like the heathen, warring? Their, their, uh, gift, their gift is the sword. Huh? So what are you, do you, what are you, are you the sword too? Are you ready for war? Okay, it says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Okay? And if ye call on Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai without respect to persons judging according to every man's work, pass the time of your soldiering here in fear. That's why. That's why we're doing this, man. I'm afraid all the time. I'm afraid of the Lord. I'm not afraid of nobody else, really. It's the Lord, because I know that in Him He's got control over everything. Even y'all. There's a reason why He's got y'all running, marching up and down the street, because you're gonna help usher in. Um, Nation against nation, okay. I beautiful. Hey man, you see them? You see them niggas over there? Man, they doing something. I don't like it. We're gonna have to get rid of some of them. Okay. For so much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. As of the lamb without blemish and without spot. So we was redeemed by the Lord. The Lord came and may have mercy on us and died. And died for, for us, man. To give us grace to get our things together. That's why we're still standing here doing what he's saying to do. Because we're under grace. Um, judgment is not directly expediently. So we're under grace right now. We have time to get our stuff together, okay? And that's why we're coming out here bringing the word to you, brothers and sisters out there in all these other camps. If you really care about the Father, you might want to check out Great Millstone, the one who's in truth, if it's for you. But this is the word coming out straight to your ears, okay? It says, who verily was, this is uh, verse 20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, okay? 
uh, who by him do believe in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in Yahweh. Okay? Seeing ye have purified your souls in obey, obeying the truth, obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfringed love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. And we, I'm loving you right now by bringing you this, this word. Okay? Okay, this is verse 23. And this is the last verse. So this is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, which liveth and abideth forever. Okay, so you're supposed to be born again by the word. By the word. The word is the one that's going to baptize you. Okay? And when you hear the word and you start to live in the word, as the word say, you become a new creature. You really do become. You should change. You should slowly drift away from that old man. Or quickly. It depends on the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Okay, look. We're going to go to uh, Exodus chapter 23, 32. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 32. 23, 32. It says, Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thy serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto them. Now, yes, I'm right now, this is a... Uh, this is speaking directly uh, about that 501c3 that, that uh, the IUIC had because they, we're not supposed to be doing that, brother man. Come on, man. Because right here, this is Exodus 20, 23, chapter 32. It says, Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. Okay? They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thy serve thy gods, it will surely be a snare unto them. So you... you you got to be totally disconnected with this man, okay, brothers? It's just as simple as that. It's, it ain't no big deal. This shouldn't be hard. This shouldn't be too hard for you to understand that, man. Are you going to do what the Lord say or not? Because don't forget, we're captives in this land. Huh? This man don't care nothing about you, man. And there's nothing to say. Uh, that's why... Uh, that's why you can't, uh, you're not to have no, no big thing like that. It's supposed to be a small thing. That's and many are, few, many are called few are chosen, see, because it's not about that. It's not about the numbers like that, man. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. It says, Woe to the rebellious children. Now this goes right to right with Exodus. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with the covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Because you're, you're calling on another name, number one, because when you come in this truth, even innate, I've seen videos of you back in the day, man, calling on the name of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. So he can put his hand to the plow, you're going to draw back? What kind of, what, what is that, man? And you were ve you were vehement about it. you were you were really uh, you had some some gusto about it too you know. So it says, "Woe to the rebellious children," said the Lord. They take counsel, but not of me, and they cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add to sin to sin. Because if you if you don't took this uh, covenant with the with somebody else, then you are you still you can't serve two masters, man. Okay, they walk. To go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. That's exactly what that means. Okay. Therefore, 
shall the strength of the Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust of the shadows of Egypt your confusion. Uh huh. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. Okay? They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be and help, nor profit but a shame and as a reproach. The burden of the beasts of south into the land of trouble anguish, from whence come the young, young and old lion, the viper and fairy, fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their tre treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. Okay? For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to not purpose, and to no purpose. Salaki. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. This is, um, so it's Isaiah chapter 30 verse 7. It says, for the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose therefore have I cried concerning this their strength is to sit still now go write it before them in a tablet and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever that this is rebellious people lying children children that will not hear the law of the Lord would say to the seers see not and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy lies and deceit, man. Prophesy deceit, should I not put anything into the Bible. Get ye out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore thus said the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon, Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, selling out in a high wall, swelling out in a high wall, whose break cometh suddenly in, in, at an instant. Okay? And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken into pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shred to take fire from the from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit okay for thus said the Lord the Holy One of Israel in returning the rest shall be saved in in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength and ye would not so the Lord saying hey I've told you I'm coming back to save you in, in quietness and in confidence shall be shall be your strength and ye would not. So once again, see up in verse um, up in verse seven, it says, "Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still." So all you got is supposed to be doing is having faith in the Lord that He's going to come back and redeem us, okay? And preaching the word in season, out of season, not be parading up and down the street or or like one one body in your house shy marching all through the projects and stuff talking about some waking somebody up you know what I'm saying waking up all of Israel and all this stuff let's start at 15 again for thus said the Lord God the Holy One of Israel in returning and rest shall ye be saved returning to the Lord returning to the ways of our forefathers understanding the word getting closer seeking the Lord's face returning having faith in the Lord and rest shall you be saved because we're going to be comforted by the word now we're going to know what's going on we're going to know who our enemies are it's time you know what I'm saying simple like, like that man in quietness and in confidence shall your strength and ye would not you would not instead of that y'all like the heathen but ye said no for we will flee upon horses Therefore shall ye flee. Yeah, because you're saying, wait, we, we got strength in numbers. Look, man, look at all this. Look what we can do. Therefore shall ye flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. Because this man's weapon is the sword, man. It says, one thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall flee. Till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a hill of a mountain. And as an insane... Ensign on a hill. 
And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you? And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you? For the Lord is God of judgment. Blessed are they, blessed are all that wait for him. Right? That's what we're doing. For the people shall dwell in Zion and Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. The cry. He says, go out and cry. Go out in the streets. Raise your voice up like a trumpet man. We're crying out to the people on the highways and byways. And we, 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 we're complaining about uh, this wicked kingdom that we're having to live in. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just crying, man. Compl yes. So the Lord says He's going to hear us because we, because up here it says we have returned and rested. Okay? And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thy eyes shall see their, see their teachers. You know what I'm saying? That's why when I saw the uh, elders and apostles of Great Millstone, I'm like, yes! This is the word. This is the truth. And I didn't, I didn't have to go nowhere else, man. There's nothing else to see. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. Okay? This is the way. We're looking for the 144,000. And the one third, the hopefully elect. Okay. All right. Um, we're so close to Jeremiah. Let's go over to Jeremiah, and let's go to Jeremiah twenty-eight, verse eight. It says, "The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms." of war and of evil and of pestilence the prophet which prophesied of peace when the word of the prophet shall come to pass then shall the prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him because we're not prophesying peace here we're talking about get ready for Jacob's trouble y'all that's why that's why this videos out to the all the brethren that's uh, all in these other camps man because there's only one way you understand? So we got to be getting ready for Jacob's trouble. We have to be sure uh, what the mark of the beast is. All these other doctrines out here, that's not cool, man. That is not cool. You understand? So don't fall on the peer pressure and stuff and think you you uh, owe anybody anything. You don't owe anybody anything except for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. You hear me? So if you're one of the hopefully elect and you do understand the word but you're too afraid to say something, get the hell out of the camp, man. This, this ain't no damn club. Huh? This is we're talking about the we're talking about the salvation, man. What's wrong with you people, man? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, now look. We're here at the end of the video. So look, at the end of the uh IUIC's video, they interviewed the lady. All right, and uh, so they brought out two scriptures. We're gonna we're gonna look at these scriptures real quick. The first one was uh, Zephaniah chapter two, verse one. It says, "Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired." Right, right, and that's what. Now, these people think it means gather yourselves together, like in a big ass group or something. No. No, no, no. It doesn't mean that. Not, not necessarily. No, not like that. It's not a congregation like the heathens. You know, like uh, these big mega churches. It's not like that, man. It says, gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation I desire. Get, that means get yourself together. Get ready. Start packing up. You know, start looking for new heavens and a new earth. You know, get, collect yourselves. Repent. Start studying the word. Get to know. Seek the Lord's face. Before the decree brings forth. Before the day pass as a chafe. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. See, because it tells you right here. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. 
seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So gathering yourself together don't mean get together and start uh, showing your numbers and oh, look at us, we, we're hanging out, we're doing this and that. Yeah. No. Just gather yourself together. Get your spirit right before that day of the Lord return. Huh? That's what it's talking about. Okay? Um, look, we, we're going to go to Ezekiel because the second one they brought out was Ezekiel. Now I'm going to have to get the dictionary for this one. Well. Oh. Okay. Okay, let me turn this camera around. Let them well, I got my sister and my niece with me out here, so okay. Oh Lord, I'm looking at Don't worry, I'm looking at Y'all ready? Yeah. Alright, five, four, three, two. Shalom, family, most high Christ bless. Officer Dothan here. This is the IUIC. Yeah, sure. Press from the streets. This is the 2019 Men's Conference edition. Uh, what's your name, sir? Natasha. Natasha, what's your name, sir? Natasha. Natasha. Would you be poop? <laughs> okay. So name? we got a couple of our sisters yeah. out here. We got a question for you. The large demonstration of men that you came to talk up to here. What do you think about that? Yeah. Wow. So those are some of the first words that come to mind. Did you, did you know that we just saw this in the Bible? Let me get that for you. Let me get Zephaniah first. Zephaniah, all right. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. That's why we come out here today, right? We come to the, to the roughest places of the world so we can gather our people together. That's what we're being impressed. That's what we need the most. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. Because wherever we go in the world, you can see the so-called black, Spanish, and Native Americans. We are being oppressed. We are on the bar. They are not desired by anybody. That's why we're gathering together. Yes, sir. Verse 1 again. Gather yourselves together. Yeah, gather together, O nation, not desire. All right, go to uh, Ezekiel. Listen to this. Listen. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Uh, because now we know who we are. We come out to our community and we're going to teach you all who you are. You are God's greatest creation. We are his favorite people who chose us. So we come out here to tell you that what you're seeing is actually God's army being put together right in front of your face. How does that make you feel? Well, with that family, we say shalom, most high Christ bless. Um, y'all can catch us on YouTube. Are you out here? Uh, I'm going to go to the website. Pookie, Pookie, which one Pookie? This Pookie. That's Pookie. I just been going. Okay, y'all. I'm about to end this, y'all. About to end this live. Thanks for tuning in. And I need y'all, too. Okay, so this is Ezekiel. Chapter 37. Ezekiel 37 and 10. All right. It says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and that, that was a beautiful thing, by the way. And they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. That's what, that's what the brother brought out, okay? Now, let's look at this word army. This is one of the, one of the things that uh, Great Millstone promotes a lot, man. 
because it will, it will get you, uh, give you a better understanding of things, okay? Now, get, don't get me wrong, brothers. We're here to bring out them uh, 144,000 and the hopefully elect and the one third. Here we go. Here, so here, here's the definition of army, okay? It says a large organized body of men armed and trained for war, especially on land. So, is that, is that what the verse is talking about? It says, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, which, which we all appreciate the breath of life, letting us know that, hey, you are the Israelites. You know, wake up, children of Israel. And they live. Now, you know, because when we come back to the truth, we're alive, man. We're not dead no more. We're alive to the truth, and the light is upon us. And they stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. So it, are we standing on our feet with weapons? Are, are we standing on our feet, a large organized body of men armed and trained for war? Is that what the Lord is talking about? No. Let's go. Let's keep reading. This is B. A unit capable of independent action and consisting of a headquarters, two or more corps, and an auxiliary troops. Is that what is that what's going on here? No, because Esau will mow y'all down, man. What the, what the hell are you doing? It's just it's just simple, simple. How long you love simplicity? The complete military organization of a nation for land warfare. So are you, what are you doing? Are you getting ready for war? Because I thought the Lord just said, sit still. That's where your strength lies and wait on him. It says a great multitude. Okay, this is number two. This is, this is the true definition of what the Lord is talking about right here. Okay. This is the second definition in the word army. It says a great multitude. Right. Then number three says a body of persons organized to advance a cause. So that's all it is. A great multitude. Okay. An exceeding great multitude. And what and that BAM! What does it say in Revelation? That the 144,000 and the great multitude. Wow. Okay. We're gonna uh, we we're about to wrap this up. We're going to go to uh, the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 30. It says, What shall they say then, that the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have obtained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? Okay? But Israel which follow after the law of righteousness have not obtained to the law of righteousness. Right? Because we it's it's all through faith, man. Not just the law, law, law. Because what, what the what the elders and apostles of Great Millstone also said, you know, that really uh helps is that the Lord actually came down to give us grace and mercy, not not to add sin upon sin, but so that we, we are warring with the flesh. But it, it is it is uh, something that you go through to become better and better and better and better and and the more you seek the Lord's face the more you understand that, hey I, I don't even want to go off you hear me I don't want to I don't want to do sin and whenever if you if you actually fall short sometimes you really feel you feel terrible man you are you're afraid of the Lord I'm afraid the Lord might take my candle out if I keep messing around you know what I'm saying if I keep uh, backsliding like that over and over again so that that keeps me closer to the spirit like if I if I do something wrong man I'm, I'm terrified and I beg the Lord and I seek his face even harder and I don't, I don't want to do I don't want to do badness no more so that's what that that's what it's going into uh, let's just this is verse 32 wherefore because they sought it not by faith but as it were by the works of the law for they stumbled at the stumbling stone so the stumbling stone is Jehovah Shai all right, because uh, you're, you're running after the law, the law, the law. Now, the law is there for a reason because he said the law is set up for the sinners. But once you reach a certain point in spirituality, you're, you're no longer a sinner because you, your iniquities 
have been you've repented okay so you don't live in sin like everyone else you uh you 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 you're more than that okay um that's why it says that the law is for the sinner so initially the law is good definitely but but once you get closer to the father um you you become it's kind of like the law become you become the law and the law becomes you kind of you know what i'm saying and it says, as it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling block stone and a rock of offense. With whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. That's right. You got to believe in Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and you won't be ashamed. Just like, um, remember how the, the scribes and Pharisees, um, they were right behind Yahweh Shai whenever he did anything, performing um, miracles on the Sabbath day, and they're, you know, they're on the law, law, law. And he's like, listen, man, this is me. And that just that example right there showing you that the law is not everything. I mean, you're so so stiff on it that you can't see anything else. But it's all about it's all right now. It's about hope and faith and and have and mercy. Hopefully, having mercy for the Lord. Okay. But the works of the law still exist. So therefore, we do follow the law as well to the best of our abilities. Um. I hope I made that. Clear, man. I hope I made that clear. Okay, so look, we, we only got two, like two more scriptures. Okay, this is uh, we're gonna go to the book of Baruch and the Apocrypha real quick, and we're gonna go to Baruch chapter four, verse fourteen. Four, verse fourteen, and we're gonna read down to twenty-two. It says, let them that dwell about Zion come and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting has brought upon them. Because we've got to first realize why we're here in the first place. We're here uh, on the punishment, man. Okay? For breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. <laughs> Alright, so we got to realize that. And who brought us here? The Most High, man. For he, that, for he hath brought a nation upon them. He had brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation, and of a strange language, who neither re re reverence old men nor pity child. And we know who that is. The man that used to dash our babies up against the rocks. The man that you got a covenant with. These have carried away the dear, the dear beloved children of the widow, and left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. But when... What can I, but what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. So, once again, the Lord is saying, hey, listen, wait on me, man. Don't be marching up and down the street. He said he's going to deliver us from the hands of our enemies, right? Let's keep reading. This is verse 19. Go your way, O children. Go your way, for I am left desolate. It says, I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. And there goes that word cry again. It says, Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, and he shall deliver you from the power and the hand of the enemies. That's why we, in these last days, uh, when we get more spiritual and get close to the Lord, and we're doing what the Lord say, that's when we pray to the Lord like our forefathers did to get us out of this place, man. You know, yeah, this is powerful, man. Prayer is powerful. That's why we're supposed to just be playing, praying like this is the time because now the Lord hears us. He hears our prayers like he did for our forefathers, man. This is bad, man. This is some serious business. And I can testify to that definitely. The Lord uh, answered my prayer and uh, just yesterday he revealed it to me. You know, because um, the situation I was in, I was like, you know, I, I knew I knew it was of the Lord, of course. But then he brought it to my remembrance. He said, listen, remember you prayed for this? And I was like, oh my goodness, I did. You know what I'm saying? Okay, look, we're going to keep on going because we're going to go to 22. This is the last verse. 
This, so this is uh, Baruch chapter 4, verse 22. For my hope is in the everlasting that he will save you and joy is coming to me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. Our Savior. Which also goes to the name Yahweh Shai, which means he saves. Okay? That's why it says, No man shall buy you, no man shall redeem you in the book of Deuteronomy 28 68. No man, because he said, when I come back, I'm not coming back as a man. Uh, this is so. This is the last scripture here in Jer in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 16, verse 13. Okay. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 13. It says, "Therefore will I cast you out of this land into the land that ye know not." Neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will not show your you favor. And that's that's already happened to us. And it's still happening to the rest the most of our people out there. And it's happening to you out there calling calling on his name Jesus Christ, which is a false god and a false idol. Huh? Because if anybody says the name Jesus Christ. What's the picture that pops in your head? Is that is the Caucasian uh, savior? And the Lord say all the other nations' gods are idols. That's in the book of uh, Psalms, chapter ninety-six, I think, is verse five. All the other uh, nations' gods are idols. So that includes Esau, man. That's their god. So you serving, you worshiping their god, man. Because our god is is Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, huh? The words are actually in, in let's let's keep going. This is verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. He says, But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of of, of Israel from the land of the north. And from all the lands whether he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Okay? Look, look, we're going to quickly just jump down to verse 21. It says, Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know, and I will cause them to know my hand and my might. Yahweh's hand is Yahweh Shai. And they shall know that my name is. Is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, baby? They shall know that my name is Yahweh. Okay? So look. I hope this lesson was edifying. I hope the rebuke went well. And I hope that some of the um if, if you're out there, if you're even out there, and you hear the words of the Lord. Look, remember he said, My sheep hear my voice, right? And my sheep follow me wherever I go. So if you hear this message out there, you're hopefully late. You're hopeful 144,000 and you're one third. Don't don't be geared to peer pressure, man. Um, you know, don't don't feel that you owe anybody anything. Great millstones right here, man. Come on to the new tulich. tulich. Get this word in you before before the time, before the gates of mercy close up. Repent and come back to the true understanding and gospel of peace. Okay? That's it. With all that, I just gotta give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakadash. Okay? I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me everything I know. Alright. I want to give salutations to all the all the other hopeful elect out there. Um of pushing the truth in all truth and sincerity. And uh and the one third. With that, shalom.